everyone, welcome back to my channel and the first video of 2021. Happy New Year! And I am so excited to get into this new year and hopefully things start to get better. Um, this year had a lot of ups and downs for all of us, I think, but I think it's also important to look on the bright side. And one of those things are books. <laughs> so, um, I have read a couple of other books, one I didn't finish, I'll get into why later, um, from Voracious Readers Only. I talked about their website a bit more in the last video I did about with book reviews, um, so I'll have that video linked down in the description as well as up in the cards somewhere. Sorry if you catch me kind of not looking at the cameras because I'm looking at the viewfinder <laughs> because I just want to make sure I'm like being seen, I guess. Um, so the first book that I wanted to talk about was Beautifully Damaged by Laura Pavlov. And so this is a romance novel, um, 18 plus. There are some uh, steamy scenes in there, so not for the younger readers. <laughs> but I am typically not a big fan of romance. It usually takes like a really, really good story for me to actually enjoy it. Um, I try and give like romance movies a try too, but even then a lot of the times it's like really petty drama and stuff like that and I don't like it. Beautifully Damaged wasn't really petty drama, I wouldn't say. I think the drama was very real. It wasn't just like a he said, she said type thing. Um, it, was, it was a very good plot, I think. Um, I'm just gonna read the synopsis now. Peyton Croft was his forever, until the unthinkable happened. Walking away all those years ago had been the right thing to do, but he's ready to put the past behind him. Moving to San Francisco and hiring his first love, the city's top designer, is a good place to start, yet it stirs up feelings he thought he'd buried. Jackson Vance broke her heart. He took half of it with him on his way out of town. Picking up the pieces hadn't been easy, but more than nine years later, Peyton is living her best life. Coming face to face with her first love is not on the agenda. He is beautiful, broken, and everything she's ever wanted. The past still hovers like a dark cloud, but every dark cloud has a silver lining. So I had a very easy time connecting with Peyton for sure. I felt like I related to her. I felt like she could be like one of my good friends, you know? Um, Jackson, on the other hand, I had kind of a hate-love relationship with him. Um, he, he's a little bit of an odd one. Like, there are some times where I thought he was really sweet and genuine, and then other times I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I, I got so frustrated with him <laughs> because I was like, okay, stop. Stop what you're doing and think this through clearly because I think he was thinking um, with not his brain, if that makes sense. <laughs> a lot of the time it really kind of seemed that way. There were a few critiques I had with this book. Not, nothing major, I don't think. Like the ending was a bit cliche, but I still enjoyed it. And like I said, the conflicts in the book were all very genuine in all honesty. And you know, I got really invested in this story more so than I thought I would actually because like I said I normally don't read romance but I'm also trying to expand my horizons and have a hope open mind because I'm a pretty I'm a pretty picky reader <laughs> um, so I ha I'm trying to break past that a little bit it was really good overall um, you know I got frustrated when the character was fr when Peyton specifically was frustrated and you know I, I really was drawn to her um, one of her friends though was a little bit odd to me if you decide to read this book you'll probably know which one I'm talking about I don't really want to I don't want to give too much away I always really suck at reviewing <laughs> books or describing them without giving away spoilers because 
<laughs> well, I guess it's only a really minor spoiler, so I think it should be okay. So the character Elle is one of Peyton's friends, and she she's a little cringy in my mind. It was a little cringy, a little cheesy with how she was written and everything, but I mean, some people could find her charming, and you know, I'm just not one of them, if that makes sense. Um, but overall, it was pretty well written. There were a couple of things, like for example, whenever two of the characters wanted to kiss, Laura wrote, wrote it as like, he wanted to cover her mouth with his. And in my mind, all I see is like, a really sloppy, unromantic kind of kiss. And it's like, I don't, I didn't, mm, I didn't like that. But <laughs> it just, it made me laugh every time I read that. So, and I know that wasn't the intention. So I feel a little bit bad. But overall, I think this is like a hidden gem of a book, especially if you're a sucker for romance novels. And um, good, the character development was pretty good on Peyton's part. Again, not so much on Jackson's in all honesty. He, I don't really know what words I have to describe Jackson because he's just, he's so odd of a character to me. I don't know. I guess it's just because like I haven't really met anyone similar to him. He's just, he's kind of an oddball for me. So it was hard for me to kind of like root for him. Like, like I was rooting for Peyton the entire time, you know, but Jackson, I'm just, because you, you read from both of their perspectives, it goes back and forth a little bit, and also there's flashback scenes as well. But there were some some points in the book that are important to the plot, so I'm not going to mention them, but where I was really rooting for him, I was like, yes, you go! <laughs> so, and then other times I was just like, I'm so sick of this guy, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, um, I think I, I would recommend it. I think on Goodreads I rated it at 4 out of 5 stars, so I definitely recommend. Now, second book, I'm not going to spend as long talking about because, at least I hope not, <laughs> because this is the one that I did not finish. It is called 22 Scars by CM North. I'm not going to include a picture of the, um, of the cover because I don't want it to be triggering for anyone who has struggled with self-harm because the cover is a black and white picture of a girl with scars on her arms. Um, and it fits the story, I understand that, but I just, I don't want to include that because I know some people are really sensitive and I, and I want to be sensitive to that as best I can. So I'm going to read the synopsis for 22 Scars. Her future is bleak, overcast with shadow and doubt. Her past harbors terrible secrets that even those closest to her can't begin to guess. When tragedy strikes someone she holds dear, will she succumb to, crush, to the crushing weight of despair, or will she find the strength to fight, to live? 22 Scars is a story of what it takes to live daily with depression, and how the scars of a lifetime can pass through generations and beyond. Can the past ever truly be forgotten? Can depression ever be beat? So... Because of the synopsis, there was a little blurb before that too, but I didn't write that down on my paper because I didn't have enough room. And like I said, I don't, I don't want to spend as much time on this one. I might end up anyway, but you know. So reading through the synopsis, I knew this was going to be, I knew there was going to be descriptions of self-harm. I knew there was going to be descriptions of, um, you know, abuse potentially. That did turn out to be the case. There is quite a few instances of abuse in this book. Um, there is, you know, there, there's a lot of triggers in this book. Um, Self-harm, suicide, drug use, alcoholism, um, and a lot of different types of abuse that I'm not going to name all of them because I don't want YouTube to like freak out. Um, and then this video did not get recommended to people who may want to hear about this book. So, reading this synopsis, I knew that there was probably going to be things that were going to be triggering, but I wanted to give this book a try anyways, because that's something I'm trying to work past. And I expected that there would be moments where I'd be triggered. I expected that there were going to be moments where I had to put the book 
away for a while and not read it. But what I did not expect at all was for all of the author's talents in description and in um, making you feel present right there with the characters to be solely focused on the self-harm scenes and the scenes with abuse. That really caught me off guard and it really kind of aggravated me. Um, like I said, if it had just been triggering because of the content, okay. And if that kind of descriptiveness had been all throughout the book, I would have been more okay with it. And I probably would have actually tried to finish it. I put this book down and I had given up on it and then I was like, okay, maybe I was just being a bit hasty. I should give this book another try. I want to see where the story goes. So I tried reading it again and I regretted it. Um, because there, there was so little depth to the scenes in between the scenes of abuse and self-harm that it really felt like this author did not care about the character and was just defining um, the main character whose name is Amy as the fact that she self-harms, the fact that she's been abused. And it, it just, it felt like I was reading a first draft a lot of the time instead of a final product. Except when I was reading or skimming those scenes of abuse and self-harm. At that point, it seemed like it was a really well-written book. So I, I have a lot of kind of gripe with this book. I'm trying to be kind of kinder to the author because this is probably their first book um, and they wanted to write about something that matters which is mental health and mental illness um, and I can appreciate that to an extent but when it, when it's written in this sort of manner it seemed like the author is more focused on shock value than of trying to speak up about something and that's not okay. It's the same issue that I had with 13 Reasons Why, which don't get me started. <laughs> but it's the same kind of issue that I've, that I've always had with it. And so just, sorry if you hear a bunch of noise in the background, but I just, I wanted to give this book a try. I wanted to try and finish it, but like there was the one scene that I had read that had got me to put it down initially was um was a scene of abuse is very it was it was pretty graphically written um and it was one of those things that like my heart was just like pounding because i was like so triggered by it and i was i was even skimming it and i was still catching a lot of detail um and so that's why i had put it down at first and then i was like okay well I want to I want to see how this progresses and the tragedy that it talks about in the synopsis whoops <laughs> is completely glossed over basically like there there's the the initial incident and then in one chapter and then that chapter ends it goes to a flashback chapter because it goes back and forth perspectives um, of Amy and her parents when they were younger and some abuse that happened there as well and so it did a flashback chapter and then there was a pretty considerable time skip and so it, it seemed like it was just really glossed over like I said and apparently Amy was really torn up over this and stuff like that but we didn't see that we didn't like I didn't read about that I didn't read about her being torn up over it I just read about you know the the, the tragedy kind of happening and then but not not even really I'm trying to describe how this was written without giving away what the tragedy is in case you are still interested in this book and do want to read it yourself um, which I, I can't say I recommend this book, in all honesty. I 
again, I feel kind of bad saying this because this is an independent author, probably their first book, but I, I can't recommend it. But, um, but you know, I still want to avoid spoilers, but okay. So I think the best way to explain this was that the tragedy was a type of an accident. Um, and so I read about the accident happening and then, and then, um, it kind of left on like a bit of a cliffhanger where I wasn't sure what the outcome was. I was like, okay, what happened? What fully happened here? Cause I don't really know to the flashback chapter. And then I was expecting it to pick up where it left off, but it completely skipped like a few weeks. Um, and then, you know, it's like briefly mentioned in dialogue that, that this tragedy had affected this character so intensely and that like she witnessed it and stuff like that. When it's like, well, I, I didn't really read that though. That's not what was written. So I felt really kind of lost. And what was really kind of confusing to me, this was probably my last point for this book, is that. The author kept switching between first person and third person, which I talked to my sister about it. She's um, she's an independent author as well. She's working on her first book. And so I was, I was kind of ranting and raving to her about this book. Um, and I had mentioned that and she said, well, that is pretty normal. It, you know, that can be a pretty good writing style for novels. And I was like, okay, but here's the thing. <laughs> The issue that I had with it that made it not flow as well, like at all, was that the third person perspective was when it was a flashback chapter with Amy and her, or with Amy's uh, parents, or if it was Amy, which is the main character, like those are the main characters, those three. And then it was first person when it was someone else, which I thought was really, really strange. And, you know, she agreed with me that it was really kind of odd. I mean, I guess I could kind of see an appeal to doing it that way, but it definitely wasn't for me and it was just confusing and weird to read. It didn't it didn't feel like it flew it, it flowed flew well <laughs> at all. Um and so yeah, when I when I reviewed it, I I only rated it 2 stars. And I rated it two stars because there were points where I could see the author's talents. I could see that. But it just felt like the author just kind of gave up on the overall plot and was just focusing on the, the shock, the shock value. And that's not something I'm about, so... Yeah, um, unfortunately I can't recommend that book. But hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I hope you guys have had a happy and safe New Year celebration and that this year brings better things for everyone.